Everybody, I, I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Lord, we are so happy to be in your presence, and we're so happy to learn of your word. I pray, Lord, as this lesson is taught, that the children would understand and that that uh, that they would take the lesson to their hearts and that they would learn from it. And we give you all the praise for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. is. You know what a captive is? What is what's a captive? They got imprisoned. That's correct. Absolutely correct. And who do you suppose was held captive here? Any guesses? Israelites. So the Israelites were held captive. They were held prisoner. Does anybody know why they would have been held captive? Any ideas? Favor? Real loud. Because, because God um, told the other nation to, cap to capture them. Right? God told the other nations. Anybody want to add to that? Anybody want to know why God would tell the other nations to come and get them and cat? And take them captive. Favor, you got your hand up again. Why do you think it was? Because the Israelites were <clears throat> sinning against God. They were sinning against God. God gave them the they were sinning against God. By sinning, that means that they were disobeying. God told the Israelites, you are to worship me, and you are to worship me alone. Only me. And they couldn't do that. And they wouldn't do that. They were worshiping this God, and this God, and this God, and they were disobeying all God's commands for almost... 500 years. For almost 500 years, they were disobeying God. Now, sometimes they would do good. Sometimes they would obey God. And then they would turn back and they'd start disobeying God again. And then they would start doing good again. And then they would start doing bad and good and bad and good and bad and good and bad. Kind of sounds like us, doesn't it? Oh, you guys got real quiet. Let me tell you something. I'm an old man now. I used to be a kid. And I had trouble obeying my parents. Sometimes I would do right. Sometimes I would do wrong. Sometimes I would do right. Sometimes I would do wrong. The Israelites were just like that. But they, they kept doing wrong, though. And more they started doing wrong. They started doing wrong more than they did right. And finally, God said, enough. I've given you almost 500 years to change. <clears throat> he said, that's enough. And they were taken, the nation of Babylon came and took them captive. And God had revealed to the prophet Daniel how long they were going to be held captive. Does anybody want to take a guess how long that would be? <clears throat> how long? How long? Daniel, God told Daniel how long they would be held captive. You want to take a guess how long?
Higher. 300. Lower. So it's three, between 300 and 50. It's between 50 and 300. 100 years, lower. So between 50 and 100. Between 50 and 100. Ninety years lower. Between fifty and ninety. That's not between fifty and ninety. Try another. Kyle. Sixty. Sixty higher. Between sixty and ninety. Xander. Seventy years. Seventy years they were held captive. Now, I'm not seventy years old yet. I'm getting there, but I'm not there. Let me ask you this. Raise your hand if you're five years old or younger. Five years old or younger, put your hand up. If you're five years old or younger, put your hand up. How old are you? You're not, that's not five or younger. Are you five? How old are you? Uh, I'm three. Three? Yeah. She's five or under. How about you two? How old are you? I'm five. Six? Four? Okay, she's five or under. Wait, and I'm five. Who's between six and ten? Three. Put your hand up if you're between six and ten. Six, seven, eight, nine, or ten years old. Six, seven, eight, nine, or ten years old. All right, put your hands down. Put your hands down if you're eleven or twelve. If you're eleven or twelve. You're not eleven or twelve. Silly. Seventy years. In seventy years. Little Oriana here, who's three years old now, is going to be 73 years old. She's probably going to be a grandma. She might even be a great grandma. How old are you? Nine. You'll be 79, you'll be 79 years old. <clears throat> you know, let me see. Do you know who Sister Lou is? She's the little lady, and she was in the early service. You might have seen her last week. She has the white hair. She wears gloves. She's 79 years old. That's how old you'll be in 70 years. You're going to be 81 years old. 81 years old. It was 70 years that they were in captivity. From the time that they were a nation by themselves, until the time that they became a nation again for 70 years. 70 years ago, we were fighting in the Korean War. It was 1951, it was 70 years ago, yes? Uh-oh. There you go. 70 years ago, nobody in this room was born yet. They were in captivity for 70 years. Years, but finally, after 70 years, it took that long, you see, for their hearts to change and for them to finally get it and say, I want to serve God and I want to only serve God. And finally, king, the king that took them captive was Nebuchadnezzar. And his son, Belshazzar, Bel goodness, Dave. Belshazzar, and then the King Darius. Anybody know? Remember who Darius was? He's the guy that was called Darius. Okay. What did he do? Was he? Was he? Wasn't he the one who wanted the? Get those guys the, uh, the, the burning, the fire? No, that was Nebuchadnezzar. What did Darius? He was a prophet? No, he wasn't. He was a king. He wanted a statue of himself. He was the one that, uh, no, that was Nebuchadnezzar too. 
Darius was the one that threw Daniel in the lion's den. Oh. He said, if you, if you ask anything of anybody else besides me, you're going to get thrown in the lion's den. He was the one that threw Daniel in the lion's den. Realized what a big mistake he made. And then finally, King Cyrus. And God moved on King Cyrus. God put an idea in King Cyrus' head and said, these are my people. The Israelites are my people. The Jews, that's what another name for the Israelites, are my people. And they need to go back to their nation. And they need to build a temple. <clears throat> they need to build another temple to God. Because when Nebuchadnezzar's armies came in, they completely destroyed the temple. They just tore it right down. And for 70 years, the people that still lived in the land, they were weak. And they were miserable. And bad things kept happening to them. But after 70 years, Cyrus said, it's time to let the Israelites go back to their land. It's time to let them build a temple again to their God. And they, uh, Cyrus sent out a decree. He said, whoever has a mind to go back to the land of Israel, let him go. And if let, let people give them things to take for the temple, for the rebuilding of the temple. And almost, almost 50,000 people, almost 50,000 people said, yeah, I want to go back. I want to go back. So they did. Now it took them a while because when they got to the temple, when they got back to where the temple had stood, it was a mess. They had to clear all the junk away. But then they had to get materials for building a new temple. And so they had to send up to Lebanon for cedars. Cedar wood is very beautiful and has a beautiful smell to it for building the for rebuilding the temple. But it took over a year. And they finally started to build the temple. And the Bible says that when they laid the foundations of the temple, the people rejoiced. And there was a great shout among the people because they were rejoicing that they finally were going to have a temple again. But it says that the old men who were in the congregation, who had seen the temple before, now, you figure, how long were they gone from Israel? How long? 70 years. Now, I would probably take some of like the younger kids here. They probably would not remember seeing the temple. But you older ones would remember it. You'd remember seeing the temple torn down and burned. And it would be forever ingrained in your minds. Those were the people that remembered the old temple. Now they're in their 80s. Maybe their late 70s. And it says when they saw the foundation of the new temple being laid, they cried. They started crying. And they cried so loud that people couldn't they didn't know, they couldn't tell the difference between the sounds of the shouting of the people and saying, oh, we got a new temple. Oh, wonderful. And the people going, oh, oh I miss seeing the temple. Oh, it's been so long. There was great joy in Israel. Listen. Sometimes we walk away from God. Sometimes we know to do right and we don't do it. I pray that it doesn't happen to any of you. But I've seen it too often. I've been at this church so long. There are people here. Who knows Kanani? I remember when Kanani was born. 
I remember when Kanani's mom was a teenager. I remember when her mom was a kid. I've seen so many kids from this church walk away from God. And I've seen some of them come back. Listen, I pray that none of you ever walk away from God but understand this. If you do, when you call on God, when you call on God, He's going to be there for you. Even if you, even if you do something wrong and you realize that you just did something wrong, call on God. He will be there for you. You see, God is, God is not a God who's, you know, He wants to punish you. He's in the, in the river, 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 river. That's not God. God's not out there saying, you know what? I remember when you sinned against me three years ago. I'm going to hold it against you. That's not God. If you find yourself ever in a position where you realize that you've disobeyed God, humble yourself before God. Say, God, I'm sorry. And he will forgive you. God is a God of forgiveness. And God is a God who gives you a second chance. That's our God. Because he loves you. He loves you. 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 He loves you. 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 He loves you. 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 And me. God doesn't want to see any of us turn away from Him. And if you'll humble yourself before God, He will take you back. He will love you. God always loves you. That's what I want you to know this morning. Zero. I hope you won't spend 70 years away from God. I won't hope you don't ever spend 70 years in captivity. I ain't picking on him. I just came over here. I don't know anything about Matthias that you that nobody else knows. In fact, I don't know anything about Matthias. Except he's usually a good kid. Usually. <laughs> usually. <laughs> usually. God loves you. God loves you. God loves you. God loves you. You get the message? God loves you. God loves you. And if you ever should doubt that God loves you, God loves you. Don't doubt it. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for your love for us. We thank you that you're always there to take us back whenever we repent. Lord, I pray now that as we go our separate ways today, that you would bless us and you would keep us. That we would always remember whenever we find ourselves away from you to turn, turn around, to turn back, to humble ourselves before you. And you'll take us back because you love us. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.